hurricane season is almost here. If you can believe it, June 1st is right around the corner. And that means we have to start getting our mind wrapped around what kind of year this is going to be. Remember, hurricane season runs from June to November. It's a six month season. And there are a lot of factors that go into making it an active one or a inactive one. Unfortunately, there are some reasons why we might see a lot of hurricanes roaring across the Atlantic this season. Let's dive into it. Before we get to the forecast, it's important to know how hurricanes are formed. You need three things to make a storm. Number one, you got to have warm water. We're talking about the ocean water having to be 80 degrees, 150 feet deep. That's really important. You also need to have a cluster of thunderstorms. This is what you can organize into a low pressure area that can become a storm. They usually are drifting off of Africa into the ocean. Also, you really want to have gentle winds. What I mean by this is you want winds in the atmosphere that are aren't going to tear apart a hurricane. That way it can grow and become a stronger system. So how are hurricane conditions looking this year? Well, we'll start with the water temperatures and I have bad news. Right now, the Atlantic Ocean is looking warm, really, really warm. In fact, it's about above average pretty much everywhere that we can track using satellites. Right now, those water temperatures are already at that magic 80 degree number in a good chunk of the ocean. That is not what we want to see still here in the month of May. In fact, we really look at one particular part of the Atlantic. We call it the main development region or MDR. What that is, that's the area between Africa and the Caribbean and in that zone we're already seeing 80 degree water which means you can start to build those storms when they're still farther away from the United States which gives them more time to gather strength and move across the ocean but will the conditions and the winds be favorable to form those storms for that we have to look at something else remember El Nino yeah, we talk about it all the time when we're predicting a future season, and it has a big impact on hurricanes too. Last year was an El Nino year. When the Pacific Ocean is warmer than usual, it increases the upper level winds all the way into the Atlantic and the Caribbean. What that means is that those upper level winds are a little bit harsher than usual, and when hurricanes are trying to get going, those winds can tear them apart. El Nino makes it harder for hurricanes to form in the first place. But that's what we had last year. This year, we don't have an El Nino anymore. In fact, we're expecting a La Nina to develop. That's when the Pacific is a little bit cooler than average. And as you would expect, it has an opposite effect on hurricanes. It decreases those upper level winds. Remember, we said if those winds are weaker, it's easier for storms to form. Well, that's the case. This year, it might be easier for storms to develop. And once they do, they can get a little bit stronger and grow a little bit more quickly than what we saw last year. So you heard it for this year. We have way warmer water than normal. We have a La Nina setting up, which also should mean favorable hurricane conditions. A lot of the experts have already been going over this data, and I agree with them. They are expecting an above average season for 2024. That means for named storms, we would expect more of those. For hurricanes, also expecting more. Major hurricanes, that's category three or higher, more of those as well. In fact, this is the forecast from the experts at North Carolina State University right down the road. They're predicting 15 to 20 storms, 10 to 12 hurricanes, three to four major hurricanes. Of course, that doesn't always tell you where they will go, but it does mean we've got to pay close attention going into the 2024 hurricane season.